Hi everybody, Audio Spawn Sudsy Bubbles here with another Pokemon challenge. Now since my last Pokemon challenge went over so well with my channel, I'm going to do another one in response to the non-existent demand for another one. Today we're going to be taking a look at Pokemon Coliseum by Genius Sonority, one of my favorite games in the entire franchise. Now, in case you somehow didn't know this, most of the Pokemon games you're probably familiar with are developed by companies called either Game Freak or Niantic, and they've been at the helm of the series pretty much since the beginning. Game Freak, that is, not Niantic. They're the Pokemon Go guys. But anyways, there was a spin-off company created in the early 2000s called Genius Sonority, which was made to make Pokemon console games, and they made Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon XD, Pokemon XD, oh god, that name, and Pokemon Battle Revolution. And that one sold so poorly that they never made any more ever again. And that's really a shame because these are very unique games in the franchise. There's not really anything else in the entire series quite like them. There's so many unique little quirks and whatnot that make them really great and unique experiences. And I just, ugh, I could gush about them all day, but we'll talk about that later. Anyways, what I'm here to do today is something I don't think I've ever seen anyone do before. I'm gonna play through Pokemon Coliseum using only the worst Pokemon available. The only Pokemon I'm going to use are Pokemon from Smogon's never used tier. So bottom of the bottom of the barrel trash, supposedly. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be brutal. It's gonna be a wild ride, so buckle up. We start our journey the way every journey should be started, in the quiet, peaceful neighborhood of- JUST KIDDING, BITCH! THAT'S NOT HOW WEST PLAYS shit. WE'RE GONNA STEAL THE SNAG MACHINE, AND THEN WE'RE GONNA BLOW THIS fucking JOINT! Oh, oh yeah! Oh my god, he's so damn cool! <laughs> In the interest of not bogging this video down with tons of exposition, I'm going to give you a brief plot synopsis to get you up to speed. Pokemon Coliseum is set in the Ore region. You play as Wes, a former member of Team Snagum, a group of criminal Pokemon trainers that use a device called a Snag Machine to steal Pokemon from other trainers. There's a criminal organization named Cypher that is turning Pokemon into what are called Shadow Pokemon, evil, corrupted versions of normal Pokemon that have had the doors to their hearts closed. Whatever that means. Now that Wes has stolen the Snag Machine, it's up to him and this random girl that he rescued from a duffel bag to catch all of the Shadow Pokemon and purify them, stopping Cypher's plan and saving the Ore region from their evil clutches. As a result of this, you're given a much smaller list of Pokemon to catch than you normally would in a typical Pokemon game. Pretty much the only Pokemon you can catch are other people's Shadow Pokemon, and a few gift Pokemon that you're given, but only one of those is going to be relevant. Anyways, onto that challenge bit. Let's lay down some ground rules. Rule number one, only Pokemon that are in Smogon's never used tier for Gen 3 are allowed. I have the URL for that right here on screen, as you can see. Anything that's in a higher tier is not permitted. Rule number two, if the Pokemon does not evolve into a never used Pokemon, it is not permitted. That means the middle forms of the starters, as well as the middle and unevolved forms of several other Pokemon are not allowed because when they're fully evolved, they are not never used. So no starters this time, unfortunately. Rule number three, no items besides held items and rare candies are allowed. So no healing items, no X items, none of that. Just pure, raw, in-battle stuff and rare candies, just so I don't lose my sanity. Rule number four, all Pokemon that can be obtained and purified, must be obtained and purified. That means if I can get the Pokemon, I get it. I don't have to evolve them though. I just have to purify and obtain every Pokemon I can. The evolve forms, it's irrelevant, it's not part of the challenge. Catching and purifying the Pokemon is the challenge. Evolving them is largely irrelevant because I'm not gonna be using them anyway. Rule number five, any Pokemon that are not never used must be deposited as soon as you find a never used Pokemon. So I'm allowed to use Espeon and Umbreon until the second I can find a never used Pokemon to use instead of them. Rule number six, no duplicate held items. This means every Pokemon's held item has to be unique. For example, no two Pokemon can have leftovers. This should probably go without saying, but I just thought I'd mention it. Now that that's out of the way, let's get this show on the road. 
So as mentioned before, after blowing up Team Snagum's hideout, you make it to the outskirts stand, which is like this weird... I don't even know what it is, this weird place with a train in the middle of the desert. You see some people with a vehicle thingy with a duffel bag, and they've kidnapped somebody, and you gotta find out what that's about. So you go and find out what that's about, and it turns out they've kidnapped someone who can see special Pokemon, which turn out to be shadow Pokemon, and then you fight them and beat them, and then you ask around town, and then you fight and beat former members of Team Snagum, and it comes out you're a member of Team Snagum, and then... And then you need to get Pokeballs for the Snag Machine to snag Shadow Pokemon, but they don't sell Pokeballs in Phenox City, which is the first city you see. Phenox? Phenox? I, I, I don't know how you say it. Anyways, you go to the outskirts stand, turns out the guy there does have Pokeballs, they've just been sitting there because there are no wild Pokemon in the ore region, so nobody needs them. But he'll sell them to you anyway, and now that you have Pokeballs, you can go and start catching Shadow Pokemon. Anyways, after going into the mayor's office and... Oh. Oh, hello there. Hmm? I'd guess you're a traveling trainer. Uh, I like what I see in your expression. <laughs> I have a feeling I may see you again somewhere. Oh, oh dear. Anyways, after going to the mayor's office and... Oh. Oh, 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 wow. Wow, okay. Oh now, aren't you boys frappfully pathetic? You mean to tell me you were bested by these darling infants? Let the music spin! Let's get it on! Uh, after that, you fight Mirror B's henchmen, and one of them has a shadow Pokemon. This is Makuhita, the first shadow Pokemon you come across. You can catch it, but we won't be using it for this challenge. This one is a guaranteed catch no matter how much health it has because it's the tutorial, but since we're not going to be using it, deposit it it gets. After that, you'll find three people guarding Phenox City. Each of them is color-coded to a different Gen 2 starter. The green one gives you Bayleaf, the red one gives you Kulava, and the blue one gives you Croconaw. I've never actually fought the guy that has Croconaw first, so we're gonna pick him. And with a little bit of effort, we defeat him and we snag his Croconaw. But since Croconaw evolves into Feraligator, and Feraligator's underused, away it goes. After that, we head towards a construction lot that will never be relevant to the plot ever again. And then we make it to Pyrite Town. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. So Pyrite Town is basically a town full of criminals that's under lockdown by Cypher, and neither the mayor nor the police force have any idea what they're doing. So naturally, it's your duty as an, I guess, vigilante to come in and fix everything because nobody else knows how to. So let's get on that. This is the Battle Square, where we'll be catching a couple of our first Shadow Pokemon. The first Shadow Pokemon up is Noctowl. Noctowl's not terribly threatening offensively, but it's got pretty solid speed and very solid special defense. But more importantly, it comes with Hypnosis, which is incredibly useful for catching Pokemon, which means it's going to stay on our team till the very end. Or, well, close to the very end anyway, you'll see what I mean. When you catch a Shadow Pokemon, it only comes with a move called Shadow Rush, which is a typeless attack that does base 90 damage and does 1 16th of your max HP and recoil damage to you when you use it. In order to use any other moves, you have to purify your Shadow Pokemon. This can be done by befriending them. In other words, the more you use a Shadow Pokemon, the more moves it has until it can be completely purified later on. Battle! Battle's so much fun! Pokemon battles for everyone! Battles bring me so much joy! Let's get started, little boy! The next Shadow Pokemon that we're gonna pick up is Slugma, and one look at those stats and you're wondering to yourself why I'm even bothering. Full disclosure, Slugma is absolutely terrible, but it's also the only fire type that you can find that's never used and obtainable within Colosseum. So, into the pile it goes. Plus, once it evolves, its defense stat is really solid, and there's lots of normal and fighting type attacks early on in the game. But once things get later on, we're gonna have to ditch it. But you'll be surprised how long I'll keep it around, mostly because having a good fire type in this game is very useful. The same, however, cannot unfortunately be said for Slugma or Mag Cargo. They're really only here because there's no other options. You're gonna want Flame Body for Slugma because you're gonna be hit by a lot of different physical attacks while you're using it. The burn chance is very useful, especially when you consider that a burn Pokemon has its attack stat dropped substantially. Anyways, now that we've done that, we're gonna sequence break ever so slightly by talking to this guy who says that Kale, the person by the entrance to Pyrite Town, has an unusual Pokemon. 
So we talked to Kale, and Kale's really tough, but the reason why we're sequence breaking and skipping to him is because we need a heavy hitter, and Kale has that. Meet Furret. Furret's a bit of an odd case. Since we won't be able to completely purify Pokemon for a decent while, Furret's going to be our best offensive option until we clear Pyrite Town. Furret might not look like much, in fact it's basically just a worse version of Raticate, but it does get one thing that separates it from the pack. It gets Strength, a base 80 power normal type move that gets boosted by the same type attack bonus, so its effective base power is 120, which is insanely powerful for this early in the game. But once you get other Pokemon and you can start purifying them, it falls behind pretty quickly. But for now, it's very useful, and Keen Eye is mildly handy because you might have someone try to lower your accuracy, and if they do, nothing will happen, so that's handy. Plus, it's actually one of the fastest Pokemon you can obtain for this challenge, so if you wish to use one, it's definitely usable. It just doesn't particularly stand out in any capacity besides its speed. After beating Kale, he'll tell you that Shadow Pokemon are being given out of the Pyrite Coliseum. So you go and try to enter, but you can't enter because the assistant to the mayor has stolen the gear used by the windmill to power the Coliseum. So you get the gear, you fix the windmill, and then you enter in the Coliseum. And after beating everybody, you're taken inside a shady building to receive your Shadow Pokemon you won for the contest. And in a weird indirect way, you do get it because Cypher's henchmen recognize who you are and try to stop you, leading us to catch the last Shadow Pokemon from Pyrite Town that we'll actually be using. Say hello to hands down the worst shadow Pokemon to use for this challenge, Yanma. When you see Yanma, you immediately see that base 95 speed and go, hey, that's not a bad stat. Unfortunately, that's where the positives end, because Yanma has next to no bulk and next to no attacks. Every useful attack it learns, it either doesn't learn in Colosseum or learns through egg moves or move tutors, neither of which are available in Colosseum. So really, the only thing it's useful for is Supersonic, which has horrible accuracy. Accuracy. And even with compound eyes, its accuracy is only 80%. And that's all Yanma's really useful for. It's basically just filler. It's really sad. It has no real offensive presence and nothing besides its speed. And even Sonic Boom is questionable because even at this point in the game, most Pokemon can take several hits from Sonic Boom before they go down. Really, the only thing Yanma is useful for is critical hit shadow rushes, and even then that's totally invalidated once you can purify shadow Pokemon completely and get better stuff. So I'm going to be getting rid of Yanma the second I can completely purify other Pokemon and forgetting about it. It is that useless. It doesn't even get Hypnosis, which would actually make it very useful in tandem with Compound Eyes. Speed Boost isn't being chosen because it can't get Baton Pass or anything that would let it pass its excellent speed. Ugh. Speaking of critical hit shadow rushes, there's a mode shadow Pokemon will go into sometimes called Hyper Mode, where if you do anything other than use shadow rush, they'll disobey you, either choosing a different attack, attacking themselves, attacking you, attacking other trainers, all sorts of stuff. And you can call them to bring them out of Hyper Mode, which will purify them slightly, or you can keep them in Hyper Mode and take advantage of the biggest perk. In Hyper Mode, shadow rush has an 80% chance of a critical hit, which means it does way more damage than it does normally. I've never actually had to use this before, but these guys are so weak and underpowered that crits are the only way I'm gonna win some of these fights, so it's actually really handy. Anyways, now that we've gotten all the Shadow Pokemon that we're going to use from Pyrite Town, we quickly catch the rest of the Shadow Pokemon in the area, which are Mischievous, Flaffy, Skiploom, and Quagsire. We can't use any of these because they're not never used, so in the PC they go. Okay. So after catching all the shadow Pokemon in the battle square and rematching the trainers there to unlock our shadow Pokemon's moves, we make our way through the building Cypher led us to, defeating the trainers on our way up and collecting items as we go. Because I'm not allowed to use healing items, I have to periodically go back to the healing machine over here to heal my Pokemon after every battle or two. It's tedious. Also, can I just say that it's a little disturbing that it's heavily implied that these trainers that are trying to stop you are mercenaries hired by Cypher? Mercenaries that exist in the Pokemon universe! Mercenaries! That's crazy! That means that somebody at some point in the Pokemon universe has like used his Charizard or something to interrogate another person! Oh my god! Anyways, you make it to the top of the building, and the guy guarding the entrance to the cave says that there's somebody in this building that needs to be interrogated! I was joking about that! But we're gonna go actually interrogate somebody? What?! 
Oh no! Inside the building, you see the assistant of the mayor being held hostage by Cypher's troops, and you gotta rescue him! What is going on? And it's here that we encounter what, believe it or not, will be the backbone of our team. In spite of the low level it's at, Remoraid here is actually incredibly dangerous. Not because of itself, but because of what it evolves into. Octillery. Look at those offensive stats. Base 105 in both of them. That's as strong as Abra. No, even stronger. Not only that, Octillery has an incredibly diverse move pool, and it has a lot of power to back that up. Unfortunately, the best water type move it gets is Bubble Beam, which it starts with. So there's no Surf here, but aside from that, it's one of the only water types in Gen 3 that learns fire type moves. And since we're not going to be keeping Mag Cargo, we're going to need that. The only downside is its bulk is somewhat middling, and its speed is not great. And, you know, the fact that it's like 15 levels lower than everything else in your party. But training it is well worth it, as you will see. So we snag Remoraid and fight the next Cypher Peon, taking her Shadow Mantine, which we're not going to be using. After that, we learn from the assistant to the mayor that the mayor's plessel is being kept in Pyrite Cave, and the person guarding the cave is a really strong guy, which, well, he's not wrong about that. Aside from Mirror B and Kale, this guy is the only real threat we've seen so far. He's the only person I've actively lost several Pokemon to, and that's mostly on account of the fact that he has a Linoon and a Shadow Quillfish, which knows Surf, which is very dangerous. We can't use Quillfish because it's underused, naturally. Oh, Mirror B! I didn't talk about Mirror B, did I? Mirror B's the guy with the Pokeball Afro and the tacky golden outfit who's stolen the Mayor's Plessel, and we gotta get it back from him. He's what's called a Cypher Admin. They're basically the leaders of Cypher, and they all have really powerful teams and dangerous shadow Pokemon. And he's the one that's got Pyrite Town under lockdown, so naturally he's the first up to bat. We make our way through the cave, following a similar pattern to what we did in the building. Beating trainers, collecting items, and healing up as is necessary. I'm only really collecting the items so I can sell them to buy more Pokeballs, though. And it's here that we come across our next Shadow Pokemon, Dunsparce. Furret, say hello to your replacement. Dunsparce might be a good bit slower than Furret, and slightly less powerful offensively, but it's much better bulk and much better special attack mean it wins in the end. Dunsparce has a better move pool, it has Serene Grace, and most importantly of all, it has access to two different status moves, Yawn and Glare. Not only that, once we get later in the game, we can actually take advantage of Serene Grace by giving it Thunder, which has a 60% chance to paralyze thanks to Serene Grace. Believe it or not, you're gonna want a Dunsparce that's good at special attacks, because even though it has less special attack than physical attack, you're gonna want Thunder for a boss battle later on down the road. Dunsparce is pretty slow, but its other qualities make it worth using. Let's keep going. After snagging Meta Titan Swablu, we make our way to the cave where Mira B is keeping Plusle and... What the hell is going on in here? Mirror Beast throwing a friggin' dance party with all of his Ludicolo! And they're just grooving, not a care in the world! What a guy! Oh my god! He's the bad guy? Really? Well, I guess we better go get pl- Hey, hey, people! Going that way is a no-no! Anyway, after letting Mirror B complete his dance number, we talk to him and tell him that he needs to give Plusle back and that he needs to stop, and naturally, being a bad guy, he takes offense to that. So now we're on to what could be considered the first real challenge this game has to offer. Mirror B starts off with... Ludicolo? 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 Oh god, no, it's happening again! Anyways, as I was saying, Mirror B's team is a bit of a weird one. It's essentially a rain dance team with nothing but Ludicolo. The only Pokemon that stands out is a Shadow Pokemon. The rest of his team are Ludicolo that are designed to take advantage of the rain. They're constantly trying to set up rain dance and then use Swift Swim or Rain Dish to their advantage, and occasionally hitting you with Water Gun. Water Gun's not really that dangerous, especially if you brought Dunsparce, but what really helps is putting status ailments on his Pokemon. His Ludicolo are a lot less dangerous when they're paralyzed or asleep. If you don't use status ailments, there's a very real chance they could overpower you. Because while Ludicolo tends to be thought of as a defensive Pokemon, this early on, it has enough offensive power to still be a legitimate threat, even though his team is several levels lower than most of his henchmen. Genius Sonority probably did that to compensate for the fact that Ludicolo is fully evolved and fairly substantially bulky. After you take out all of his Ludicolo, he sends out what I guess you could consider his ace, Pseudo Wudo. This Pseudo Wudo is a shadow Pokemon, naturally, and when you look at those stats, the first thing you immediately notice is that wonderful defense. 
well, wonderful for the standards of what we've been catching. It has the same defense stat as Graveler and a higher attack stat. It's actually one of the most powerful physical attackers you'll have access to. The downside is everything besides its physical attack and defense. It is very slow, its HP is middling, and its special stats are basically non-existent. And it doesn't have the secondary ground typing, which means it's not immune to electric attacks. But on the bright side, it's also not quad weak to grass or water. So, there's that. Pseudowoodle can often survive a single surf, which is handy. Pseudowoodle's most useful trait, however, is its access to Rock Slide, which can hit both enemies on the field. Pseudowoodle gets all sorts of useful moves, but funnily enough, the most useful thing Pseudowoodle can do is bait the enemy, because the AI seems to love targeting Pseudowoodle, so you can use Pseudowoodle as bait while the rest of your team tears the enemy apart. It's really funny to watch, although it probably won't work in a double battle with a real person, because they're usually smart enough to notice what you're doing. Pseudowoodle is going to be one of my main physical attackers and physical walls. You're going to want Rockhead for Pseudowoodle because it gets double edge later on, and double edge without recoil damage is a really fearsome thing, even when it doesn't get same type attack bonus damage. So we snag Pseudowoodle from Mirror B, we defeat him, and he makes his great escape, and... Wait, what the fuck was that pose Mirror B was doing when he was on the television before? So oh my god! I take you to the candy shop. Um... After defeating Mirror B, we rescue the mayor of Pyrite Town's Plussel and return to his home. And then Plussel decides it wants to join our team. And as such, you obtain one of the only Pokemon in this game that is not a Shadow Pokemon. Say hello to Yanma's permanent replacement, Plussel. Plussel has the same speed, the highest speed anything in this game has to offer in fact, but much better stats, including its special attack. It's not much by the standards of the overused metagame, but by the standards of what we have here, it's actually wonderful. Plus, it will mostly be delegated to support, though, using Helping Hand to boost our other Pokemon's moves, and using Thunder Wave, taking advantage of that nice speed it has to paralyze any Pokemon that are slower than it is, which will be a decent chunk of them. Plusle's at a pretty low level, but it gets the boost to experience that traded Pokemon get, and Pokemon obeying you and disobeying you isn't a thing in this game, so no matter what level Plusle reaches, it'll always obey you unconditionally. Plusle also learns Thunder naturally, so that's very handy. It's funny, Plusle's usually considered a really bad Pokemon, but here the pool of electric Pokemon you can actually use are so small that Plusle ends up being the biggest fish in the small pond. It's actually quite powerful for the standards of the tier, and quite powerful for the standards of this challenge. Nothing compared to Ampharos or Raikou though, sadly. After several minutes of screwing around in Pyrite Town, we talk to the local fortune teller, who tells us that what we need might be up north. Fortuitously, that also happens to be where our lady friend's grandparents live, and she says her grandfather might know a thing or two about shadow Pokemon. So we head north to Agate Village, a village populated mostly by elderly people, trainers, and elderly trainers. After talking to the locals for a bit, we find out that there's an ancient shrine in town imbued with the power of Celebi that can completely purify any shadow Pokemon that has had its purification meter reduced to zero. Naturally, Cypher has found out about this before us, and they're attempting to destroy the shrine so that Shadow Pokemon can't be purified, and so it once again falls upon us to stop them. We quickly pick up the XP share, the Silk Scarf, and the Quick Claw, and then we head off to stop Cypher. The XP share is so Plusle can catch up with the rest of my team quicker, the Silk Scarf is for Dunsparce's takedown, since it boosts the power of normal type moves, and the Quick Claw is for Remoraid, so it at least has a chance of getting a shot or two in before it gets brought down, since it's at such a low level. So we head into the cave leading to the shrine, beating Cypher peons along the way, until we come to the eponymous grandfather, Egan, arguing with the leader of the team of peons, Scrub, spelled S-K-R-U-B. Yes, really. He engages in a battle with Egan's Pikachu, a battle that Egan would have probably won if he actually used an electric type move instead of just spamming quick attack after Scrub's Hitmontop's Intimidate activated like a dumbass. After Egan's Pikachu takes an unneeded thrashing, it's on us to stop Scrub, which should be a piece of... Oh, we lost. Okay, let's try again. Damn it! Okay, in spite of his name, Scrub is not a pushover. Ugh. Let's give this one more go, and... Yes! Finally! After defeating Scrub, snagging his Hitmontop, and being congratulated for protecting Agate Village, we receive an email telling us that a place called Mount Battle is under siege by Cypher. But before we head there, we need to purify our Pokémon! So we purify Noctowl, Dunsparce, Slugma, and Remoraid. 
Now they have all their regular moves available to them, and they can actually gain levels, which means some of them can evolve, which is very good. So after battling some of the people that live in Agate Village, we can finally purify Pseudo Wudo. And now that we've purified Pseudo Wudo, our entire team is purified. But before we go to Mount Battle, we need to make a quick detour back to Phoenox City. We're gonna enter into Phoenox Stadium so we can get four TMs. The TM for Rain Dance, Sunny Day, Giga Drain, and Solar Beam. We'll be needing those later. We also picked up the TM for Toxic, but I'm not going to be using that until way later, so it's almost not relevant to mention. After clearing Phoenox Stadium four times to get the four TMs, we go to Mount Battle and we attempt to loosen Cypher's grip on the area. We make our way through the first nine battles of Mount Battle with relative ease, with plus alerting Thunder along the way, which will make things much easier going forward. But, uh, ooh, that guy at Battle 10, ooh, I don't like the look of that guy. I think we need to, uh, go prepare a little bit. Now you're not actually meant to come to this stadium until a lot later, but we stand zero chance of beating that Cypher admin with the way our team is right now, so we're gonna go ahead and risk it. So we fight our way through Pyrite Coliseum, getting the TM for Focus Punch, and leveling up Slugma until it evolves into Mag Cargo, increasing its defense considerably. And then we grind up our Remoraid to level 44, the level it learns Ice Beam at, and let it evolve into Octillery. And now we're ready to finally take on the Cypher admin. So after our several hours long grinding session, we head back up Mount Battle to deal with the next Cypher admin, Dakim, Cypher's resident brick shit house, who is currently punching a Mount Battle leader in the solar plexus! <laughs> oh my god! Anyways, he's in charge of the Mount Battle takeover, and we gotta stop him because, you know, that's bad! <laughs> I'm Dakim. I'm big and stupid, and I eat rocks. <laughs> As you may or may not have surmised by now, Dakim is the toughest enemy I've faced so far. You might be curious about his last Pokemon, but we'll get to that in a minute. Dakim's primary strategy is just spamming Earthquake. Well, okay, that's not entirely fair. He'll have one Pokemon use Protect, and the other use Earthquake, and alternate between the two every other turn. However, if he did what I did, and brought something Earthquake doesn't hit, like Noctowl, he'll almost never use it. But even without Earthquake, his team's still pretty dangerous, especially Flamethrower from Camerupt and Double Edge from Golem. If he had actually bothered to evolve his Marsh Tomp into Swampert, he'd be even more difficult to defeat. But you might be wondering why I'm not having that much trouble with him. The answer is simple, really. Octillery. I leveled it up so much that Dakim doesn't really stand a chance. I kinda knew how hard he would be going in, so I guess I overprepared. <laughs> Anyways, let's get on to Dakim's Shadow Pokemon. Ha! <laughs> I wish! The only reason Entei is here is to confirm that yes, you can get Entei, Raikou, and Suicune as Shadow Pokemon in this game. And it made quite a bit of grounds in the fandom for that at the time, because these are Pokemon that are very difficult to catch otherwise, even today, honestly. So yeah, you can catch Entei, and I'm only really listing Entei here just to give you a reference as to what you could be using if you weren't using crappy Pokemon instead. And God, does it make me sad. Entei steamrolls nearly everything that gets in his way that he's not weak to, and, uh, Entei's just so cool. I mean, the third Pokemon movie might be, might be making me ever so slightly biased, but why can't I use Entei? Bye, Entei, maybe in another playthrough. After defeating Dakim, he realizes that you can't be pwned by a scrub, so you certainly aren't going to lose to him, and he tells you that stronger shadow Pokemon are being made even now, and then he leaps out of view. But there's one problem here. I see nothing but mountain as far as the eye can see. So either Dakim can jump and possibly high, or he just jumped 100,000 feet in the air off the mountain battle platform and promptly plummeted to his death. Oh crap, 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 Jesus Christ, I didn't take this throw! So anyways, after witnessing Dakum's gruesome suicide, the Mount Battle area leader, Vander, thanks you for coming to Mount Battle to rescue him. And then he gives you something called the Time Flute, which is a flute that can summon Celebi up to three times throughout the game. And I don't think it's a coincidence that you're given the Time Flute right after you capture Entei. You know, you have this really powerful legendary shadow Pokemon that takes forever to purify otherwise, and you have this thing that instantly purifies him, and you put him together and the game developers kind of be like, you know, wink wink, nudge nudge, well, we won't tell anybody. 
God, it's like if you took a bottle of Chardonnay to a recently divorced Alcoholics Anonymous member and told her, you know, you don't have to drink this, but I'm just, I'm just setting it here and you know, whatever happens is none of my business. I'm just gonna leave this nice wine here and go about my day and you do whatever you want with it. You pour it down the sink or drink it. I won't tell anybody. But since we're not allowed to use Entei, we're not going to be doing that. So after saving Mount Battle, you make your way back to Pyrite Town, only to find that the people you snagged the Shadow Mantine and Shadow Remoraid from are in jail now. So you go to jail and you find that they have a key to somewhere, and you go back to the building that they were giving away Shadow Pokemon at, and you find that there's an elevator that the key fits into. And then you make your way to the Under. And <laughs> wow, I almost feel bad that I wasted the wretched hive of scum and villainy jokes so early. This is the first place in the game you can actually buy TM, so we're gonna stock up on a few. Most importantly, Thunder for Dunsparce and Fire Blast for Mag Cargo and Octillery. As well as Protect for Sudowoodo and a couple others, just so we can cheese some of these battles. Anyway, this is where the next Cypher admin is located. She's a celebrity named Venus. No, not that one. Get her off the screen. Anyways, Venus is... She basically has no personality whatsoever. She's a celebrity for some reason that's never really specified. And she's evil, and she has shadow Pokemon. She is, quite frankly, the least fleshed out character in the entire game. And that's really saying something, considering virtually none of the antagonists outside of Mirror B have any real personalities. She's just generic evil female antagonist number 43. Like, let me go down a tra let me run down a list of her personality traits. She's pretty, she's vain, she's evil, and that's it. She, she's pretty and she's evil. In other words, roughly half of ev roughly every other female JRPG antagonist in history. I I'm not asking for much here. Just give me something. Have her hit on you. Have her say you're the only one for me. Have her try and stop other people from getting to you once you beat her because she realizes how strong you are. Something, anything, but no. Ugh, anyway, everybody in the under, which is what this place is called by the way, everybody in the under has a crush on Venus, and you gotta figure out what's going on with the shadow Pokemon in the under, and there's this guy with Waylord, who's basically a tech showcase, and I'm sure this was really visually impressive in like 2004, and, it, uh, you, uh, you talk to these kids who need a, a radar dish or something, you get a key that lets you use this hover thingy, and it lets you go to where Venus is currently broadcasting, and then you get into a match with her. Ugh. Oh wait, no! But first, before you do that, you gotta help the uh you gotta help the assistant to the mayor of Pyrite Town because he's managed to get himself abducted by Cipher while trying to investigate him. And he gotta stop these two people who abducted him. Their names are Cloak and Dagger, and one of their shadow Pokemon is I don't care. Uh Anyways, we interrupt Venus's broadcast. We're fighting her now. Venus's strategy in a word is annoying. Her whole strategy is based around spamming attract and then spamming status ailments and hoping you don't ever attack her. And if you're unlucky, that's exactly what's going to happen. She spams a track, and then she uses moves that can cause confusion or flinching, and in the case of Bayonet, uses Curse to siphon away your health like crazy, and she can also paralyze you with Stun Spore. On top of that, she has an incredibly dangerous Shadow Pokemon in Suicune. So really, her whole team is quite dangerous. They're very bulky, they all do pretty decent damage, and if you haven't grinded or prepared, you're going to get flattened pretty quickly. In case you haven't noticed, they're level 45. And most of the trainers around here are like 5 to 10 levels lower than that. So this is quite a challenge. The big ticket threat you'll immediately notice is Steelix, which is exactly why I got Fire Blast. This is one of those fights where if you're not prepared, you will lose. And on several previous playthroughs, I have in fact lost. Because Attract is really dangerous, and pretty much all of her Pokemon, with the possible exception of Delcaddy, are all dangerous. For whatever she's worth, Venus is not someone to be taken lightly as far as threats go. She's not the most difficult boss in the game, but if you've been screwing around up to this point, you need to stop screwing around because you're going to start losing a lot. Anyways, once we get her down to Suicune, Suicune's actually easier to catch than Entei or Raikou, and that's mostly because it's a water type and you can use a net ball, and those have a 4 times catch rate as opposed to the Ultra Ball's 3 times catch rate, so 
Suicune's relatively easy to catch. I say that, but uh, come on! Come on! Ah! Uh, damn it! Come on! Uh, why isn't it working? Uh, come on! Come on! Ah! Uh, thank you! After you beat Venus, she decides she's gonna get the fuck out of here, so she runs to an elevator and gets the hell out of Dodge. Fortunately for you, you can do the healthy option and take the stairs, so you won't be dying of obesity in 30 years. And I want to take a moment to say, this is awesome! We're chasing a wanted criminal down an elevator shaft while her cronies try and stop us, and they're no match for us at all! Not only that, we're stealing their shadow Pokémon! This is cool as hell! Why can't I get more of this in the main games? This is awesome! We're trying to catch a fleeing enemy? That's great! Anyways, we defeat everyone that gets in our path, and we catch their shadow Pokémon on the way. These include Gligar, Stantler, and Piloswine. Say hello to Mad Cargo's permanent replacement, Piloswine. You might be wondering why Piloswine's here, because its evolution, Mamoswine, is actually pretty good in Gen 4 and onward. It's mostly because Piloswine's stats don't really make sense for its weird typing. It has great HP, great attack, and pretty solid defense, but its special attack and special defense are pitiful for an ice type, and it's very slow. Even with that having been said though, ice type attacks are quite powerful even from a weak offensive Pokemon, and that ground typing is handy because it's the only thing that gets the same type attack bonus on Earthquake, so Piloswine's gonna be what we give Earthquake to. Not only that, those rock-solid defenses mean there's no real reason to use Mag Cargo because as many weaknesses as Piloswine has, Mag Cargo has way more and they're a lot more common. Piloswine can typically take a hit or two. Mag Cargo, not so much anymore. Plus, Blizzard is just always awesome. After catching Piloswine, we want to use all of its moves immediately, naturally, so we go to Agate Forest and then we purify it using the Time Flute. And already, I can hear some of the people that have played this game before gnashing their teeth, because like I mentioned before, the Time Flute's usually reserved for the Legendaries. Because like, you know, you get Entei, Raikou, and Suicune, and they're not good enough for you? Pretty much everybody who plays this game uses the Time Flute on these Pokémon. Either that or Metagross and Tyranitar. Although some people do use it on Vibrava occasionally, and you did hear me right, Vibrava, because the one you can obtain is two levels away from evolving into Flygon, which is actually pretty good. But since this is a never used run, that's naturally not gonna be a new one. So we go back down the elevator shaft, fight this lady who has a Shadow Sneasel, catch the Sneasel, teach Pilot Swine Protect, and then you catch up with Venus and she says she can't let you take the subway to the Pokemon lab, so she goes in the subway, you go through the subway to try and follow her, and then she, and then, <laughs> and then she's, she says, I, I'm not gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> so she leads you through the subway cart that's headed to the Pokemon lab. You run in after her, and she says, Here's the key to the subway right here. I duped you so easily. And then you go outside and find the key on the floor. <laughs> oh my god. You know, she, but she, but she's good at battling, but God, she is, uh, not so good at, um, deceiving you. <laughs> so, um, anyway, you get the key, you take the subway, and it leads you to the entrance to the Pokemon lab. You go to the door and- HOLY SHIT, THEY BLEW UP THE DOOR! Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, um, that'll, they'll stop you, definitely! So, um, we pick up the key to the lab, which is inexplicably right by, like, the friggin' back door or whatever. You pick up the items, and it, one of them is a disc that lets you collect another time flute. And, uh, you teach it- you get a couple more TMs. And, uh, we gotta find another way into the Pokémon lab now! Oh, boy! Fortunately for us, the lab is just out there in the middle of the desert, sticking out like a pearl in a bag of sand. So we circle around it, trying to find a way in, picking up some items. So we take the door on the right, and we find a switch that opens the main door. And now that we flip the switch, we can go into the lab proper. This is the lab where Cypher makes their shadow Pokémon. And that's, you know, incredibly bad! So we gotta put that to a stop immediately. 
pretty much everyone here that isn't a Cypher Peon is a scientist, and they typically have either fossil Pokemon or electric types. So I'm really glad I brought Piloswine, even though it doesn't have Earthquake yet, because they can't really touch Piloswine, and Dig just destroys most electric types. We finally get the card key that lets us open the proper main section of the lab, and good lore, this lab is like an onion. It has so many layers, or maybe an ogre. I don't know, it really depends on your analogy. Somebody. Also worth mentioning, there's Cypher Peons here that jump down from the fucking ceiling to fight you. You won't see that in any of the mainline games, now will ya? A-bomb right here is never used, and you can catch it, but outside of the fact that it gets pickup, it's not super useful. But maybe with pickup, we... It. I'm not resetting the game to catch it again. So after that we catch Foratris, which is actually a really awesome Pokemon So naturally it's not never used so we can't use it Ariados, which is a Pokemon that would be largely redundant on my team because Octillery serves pretty much the same purpose it would Murkrow, which I very nearly came close to using but Noctowl won out because Noctowl has Hypnosis and Reflect and Murkrow is more of a pure offensive Pokemon but if you want something to deal with Psychic types, Murkrow is pretty much your only option if you're doing a never used run like this. Grand Bull, not never used. And lastly, Vibrava, which I mentioned earlier. It can evolve into Flygon, but again, not never used, so not using it. We also track down Pokemon DNA that Cypher is using for some kind of security system. Speaking of security systems, once you defeat one of the last scientists in the area, he turns this alarm on and says you can't leave. Turns out he's bluffing. The real punishment is listening to this godforsaken alarm for the rest of the time you're there. And since I can't use items, I gotta go all the way back to the under healing thing so I can heal my Pokemon and come all the way back while listening to this on an endless loop right before we get to the real boss. And after all that exploring through the lab, we finally come across the person responsible for all this madness. The man turning animals into killing machines, using all sorts of wicked science to turn innocent animals into tools of war. Hojo! Uh, I mean, Ein! Y yeah, two totally different characters. Totally different. Not the same at all. They don't even have similar motivations. They both wanted to turn animals into... You get where I'm going with this. Let's just fight the man. If you're wondering why I put Thunder on Plessel and Dunsparce, you have your answer now. Ein is a rain dance team executed pretty well, and all of his Pokemon are really well built to take advantage of it. Except Golbat, naturally. So you'll have your work cut out for you beating him. If you don't have something to counter Rain Dance, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. He's one of the toughest bosses in the game, and he lives up to that reputation quite a bit. And his Shadow Pokemon's no slouch either, as you'll see. So my strategy for this fight is to spam status ailments and spam thunder because he's going to try to set up rain dance as many turns as possible. And a lot of these Pokemon get bonuses from rain dance, like buffs to their water type attacks, and in Huntail's case, Swift Swim, which makes it faster than anything on your team. So if you paralyze it, it's much less threatening. Honestly, if you try to take Ein in a straight fight, you'll really struggle doing that. You need to find ways to either slow him down or stop him from attacking. Otherwise, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. The funny thing is, if you have Thunder on your team, pretty much everything he has except his last Pokemon is weak to it, and he'll often screw himself over. So in a lot of cases, if you have Thunder on more than one Pokemon, you can beat Ein just by spamming that attack over and over again. But if you try that for his last Pokemon, well... Well, you'll see. It's not as clear-cut as it not working, but you'll see what I mean. So by the time we make it to Ein's Shadow Raikou, he's torn through a pretty good chunk of my team just by using electric water and ice type attacks. And we end up in the weird situation where the only counter we have left to Raikou is Plusle. So I paralyze Raikou with Plusle, and we get into this weird stalemate where we're throwing thunder at each other, but Plusle does more damage and is faster, so we keep hitting each other with thunder until it gets to the point where I can catch Raikou. It's honestly one of the weirdest victories I've had because I literally just brute forced my way through with a bustle of all things. It's really strange. 
So after defeating Ayn, he tells us that the ultimate shadow Pokemon he's created is lying in wait for us to crush us like the insects we are. So we pick up Earthquake and teach it to Pilot Swine, and we find a data ROM and take it to the under, and the kids there tell us that it's actually a list of shadow Pokemon that's been scrubbed, so they're going to try and retrieve the list of shadow Pokemon so you can catch them all and purify them. And now you go to this innocuous, gigantic tower in the middle of the desert, only to find that this is the real Gam Tower. A tower Cypher is created to entertain people while they hold massive shadow Pokemon battles at the Colosseum on the very top. And you already know where this is going. This is the very last place you go in the game and the leader of Cypher is waiting for you at the top. So of course you have to rematch all the Cypher admins which have, you know, much stronger versions of their teams. But most of them don't have shadow Pokemon which makes it a lot easier because one of the hardest parts of the fights is holding back deliberately to catch shadow Pokemon. And since they don't have shadow Pokemon you can just go all in and you usually do just fine. There are a couple shadow Pokemon here and I'll go over those really quickly. You also fight the person you took your starter from and in this case since I took Croconaw it was Bluno and these not really much to write home about but they all have the same team. So they all have Muck, and they all have Grumpig. That's kind of neat. So the Shadow Pokemon then. You can get Sunflora, which I consider using for never use, but Sunflora is really slow, and it's mostly outclassed in terms of everything except raw power by what's coming a little bit later. There's Deli Bird, which is a decent special attacker for never use, but it's not really good in any other aspect, so I'm just going to skip it. Heracross, which is so far from never used that the idea of even using it is laughable. It's insanely strong. Skarmory, which is literally a metagame staple. Oh, by the way, Skarmory's owned by your old boss, Gonzap, who you have to defeat to make it onto the elevator. And he's like, oh, well, why don't you join me in this and that? And of course, being a reformed good guy, you say no. And once you defeat Gonzap, who admittedly is... Okay, I have to talk about Gonzap, don't I? Gonzap likes spamming really powerful attacks with really powerful Pokemon. The end. Also in Japanese, Gonzap's name is Hell Gonza, which is a much cooler name. So we make our way up the tower, and in order to fight the boss of Cypher, you have to defeat a gauntlet of four trainers first. Kind of like the Elite Four in other generations and other Pokemon games, but, you know, they're all bad guys that are explicitly trying to stop you. What kept you, Sudzy? I worried that perhaps Gonzap had beaten you. The time has come for you to pay off some debts. We'll have you battle as payment towards the huge losses you inflicted on us. I expect to see spectacular battling out of you. After all, you're here to entertain! <laughs> Unlike the Elite Four in the mainline games, these trainers aren't really all that challenging on their own merits. They're actually pretty easy compared to what you've just gone through. The real challenge here is snagging their shadow Pokemon without knocking them out, because as I mentioned before, you have to hold back to catch them. If you go all out, well, you'll just knock them out and you'll have to get their shadow Pokemon later, and considering how close we are to the end, that's not exactly ideal. The first shadow Pokemon up is Miltank, which is not never used and is actually a very good Pokemon. The next shadow Pokemon up is Absol, which is also not never used, so we just catch it and move on. The next shadow Pokemon up is Houndoom, which again is not never used and is also a dark type like Absol. So that's three of the four Pokemon these people have that are totally useless to me. But the last one is the real prize, Tropy. Oh, we got beaten. Let's try that again. Tropius. Man, I almost feel sorry for Tropius. Tropius is incredibly underrated in pretty much every tier it's been in. It's basically Bayleaf's cousin that dropped out of college to pursue its creative dreams, but those dreams never really got any far and it always struggles to make the rent. Its stats are pretty similar to what a Bayleaf evolution would be in a lot of ways, honestly. A lot of ROM hacks make Tropius one of Bayleaf's alternate evolutions. And Tropius is not terrible on its own merits. I even picked it over Sunflora because while its special attack is nowhere near as good, everything else is a lot more rounded. Plus with Corophil, if you can teach it Sunny Day, its speed will be doubled and it'll be faster than even Plusle. And its defenses are actually pretty passable, it can take a hit or two. 
and its unusual grass flying typing means not too many physical moves can actually do damage to it if they're not poison or flying. So, you know, it actually resists a lot. It's very useful, but that typing and w that weakness to ice is really bad in higher tier play. So it's almost never seen. It's seen as it's seen as largely inferior to Executor. And Tropius's main selling point is its passable bulk and access to Chlorophyll, Sunny Day, and Solar Beam. All of those things working together simultaneously means Tropius is a very powerful grass type attacker. And Fly is occasionally useful for picking off some odd things here and there. But like outside of that, it's not all that useful. Tropius will play a critical part in my team, and it is replacing Dunsparce for that reason. Tropius doesn't have the biggest role, but the role it plays is vital, and I'm happy to have it. Welcome, Tropius. And to show Tropius how happy I am to have it, I'm going to massage it into a buff. Oh, oh no, what am I doing? Uh, oh god, I'm I'm massaging a freaking Brachiosaur. What? No, I, I'm, I'm giving a Brachiosaur a pat down until it loves me enough to open its heart up to me. What the hell's going on? <laughs> so after massaging Tropius with like 30 vivid scents, we're ready to purify it without battling with it at all. And we, f <sighs> okay. And now that Dunsparce has been replaced with Tropius, we have our team that will truly take down Cypher with. Now that I no longer have to hold back, defeating those four trainers should be a cinch. And much as I predicted, it's not that challenging at all. But what's coming is... Bravo! Bravo! Well done! Why not become a Cypher Show Battle Trainer? Would you even consider it? I'll vouch that you will become a top star in no time. I wouldn't have minded making that proposition, but I'm afraid I'm not that big-hearted. I will destroy you in battle right now. You will know the humiliation of total domination before this crowd. Naskauer is the leader of Cypher, and his strategy is Venus's strategy on steroids. He uses Confuse Ray, Attract, and tries to paralyze you, in addition to using X items. He's really dangerous! So first we set up Protect with Sudowoodo to block Psychic from Gardevoir, and then he tries to use Swagger with Blaziken, but Sudowoodo blocks it again. So we nail his Blaziken with Bubble Beam, and down his Blaziken goes. So that's his first main offensive Pokemon down, so he sends out Walrein as a response. So then we use Fire Blast and we use Flail on Gardevoir because Gardevoir is going to taunt Pseudo Udo. So we nail Gardevoir with Fire Blast that only takes a little over half of its health and then he knocks out Pseudo Udo in one hit with Waterfall in return. So as a response to that we send out Plusel. We use Light Screen to up our special defense because he hits really hard specially and then he uses Taunt on Octillery for some reason. We nail Gardevoir again and Gardevoir is gone. After that, he sends out his defensive Pokemon, Dusclops. He uses Attract with Wall Rain to stop Plusle from attacking, and Plusle gets attracted. And now Plusle's pretty much dead weight because every single turn, Attract or Confusion activates, Fire Blast misses, Body Slam, he nails Plusle with it, so now Plusle's in real trouble. Dusclops uses Confuse Ray on Plusle, so Plusle's confused and attracted now. We gotta hope something lands. He uses X Special, and uh, now his Pokemon are even stronger. Plusle gets hit by Confusion, so Octillery uses Fire Blast, but it misses again. We're out of PP for Fire Blast, so we use Bubble Beam on Dusclops, and Plusle gets hit with a Confusion again. We use Bubble Beam on Dusclops, and it takes just about half of its health. And we're in a lot of trouble. That Speed Drop helps. Ice Beam just nails Plusle. Plusle's gone. Ah, that's just great. So we're gonna send in, let's say... We're gonna send in Pilus Wine, because that's our best bet. So Dusclops uses Shadow Ball, but since Pylos Wine has such great defense, it doesn't destroy it completely. And then we set up Protect with Pylos Wine while we use Bubble Beam on Dusclops again, and now Dusclops is down. That's a huge nuisance removed. removed. 
And now he's gonna send out Zatu, which is another dangerous special attacker. He tries to hit Bioswine with Waterfall, but Protect protects it, and Light Screen's worn off. So Zatu uses Psychic on Piloswine, and Piloswine goes down. Bye, Piloswine, you did your job. Okay, so next we're gonna send out Tropius, and Tropius is really gonna prove his worth in this fight. Then we use Ice Beam and we nail Zatu. Zatu's gone in one hit. So now he's down to two Pokemon, his Walrein and his Shadow Pokemon, Metagross. This thing's a nightmare to catch, so we're gonna have to be real careful. He hits Tropius with Waterfall and gets a crit, but it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna hit Walrein with Psybeam and have Tropius use Sunny Day. Metagross wastes a turn using Iron Defense, but Walrein uses Ice Beam and one-shots Tropius. Now we're really back to do a corner here. Um, so we use Hypnosis on Metagross. That hypnotizes it, but now we gotta take care of Walrein. Octillery hits Walrein with Psybeam, and it's still standing somehow. So Walrein, oh, Metagross is fast asleep. Walrein uses Ice Beam, and now Noctowl's been shot in one hit. This guy's unstoppable. So we use Psybeam on Walrein, and now we're down to the wire here. The only Pokemon that are left are my Octillery and his Metagross. We are in serious trouble here. We're in a really bad spot here because, <laughs> well, I mean, Metagross can realistically take me out in two or three turns, so we need to catch Metagross in the next couple of turns, or we're gonna have to do all five of these fights over again. Oh my god, I really, really hope this works, please! I really hope this works, come on! No! Metagross wakes up, hammers us with Psychic, and oh, it does a decent amount of damage, but not enough to take us out of the fight. We are really, our only choice now is to spam Timer Balls and hope one of them catches Metagross before Octillery gets taken out. And that one doesn't work either. We're getting seriously back into a corner here. If we keep missing these balls, then ugh, Octillery can take one more hit. If, 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 if we have two balls left, if the one after this one fails or we get a critical hit, we lose. Come on. Oh god, this is really tense. It's one of those things where you can really feel your heart pounding. It's just, oh man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> we did it. Oh my god. <laughs> we did it. Oh my god! <laughs> it's not over, Sudsy. Come on, we shall battle! Enough! Don't embarrass yourself, Naskawa. Sir, I, I beg your pardon. My, my, that certainly was a battle worth seeing. I must be honest with you, I never imagined that you would get this far. At times, I am the affable mayor of Phenok, and at others, I am the secret boss of the criminal syndicate cipher. I am Evis, and I shall rule the world! How dare you meddle in our affairs so thoroughly! The Shadow Pokemon plan we can resurrect from the start, but you two, you'll never be forgiven! I'll destroy you so utterly you may never again rise against me! Oh my god, it's Dr. Fucking Andonuts! Yeah, I bet you didn't see that coming, did ya? Time for the real final boss, Evis! Evis has a reputation as being the most difficult boss in the franchise, and while that is true to some extent, he's actually fairly easy to stop if you know a couple of flaws in his AI. So first he intimidates us trying to lower our attack. That's why you want to use generally special attackers first. You want to leave with special attackers if he uses Salamence. So we use Protect on Sudowoodo because he's about to use something really powerful with his slacking. So we hit his Salamence and one-shot it with Ice Beam because of that quad weakness it has. So he sends out Scizor, which is a very bulky Pokemon. Slacking uses Earthquake, which does a lot of damage to Sudowoodo. That's why we use Protect. Look at that. Earthquake took like half of Octillery's health, even though it's close to the same level. But it also took half of Scizor's health. And Scizor is very difficult to take down if you don't have a Fire-type move. 
We're going to have Artillery use Fire Blast on Scizor. And Sudowoodo is going to use Focus Punch on Slacking. Focus Punch is the only way we're going to realistically be able to take down Slacking. Fire Blast misses, so Scizor counters with Silverwind, knocking Octillery out. And that gives you an idea of how dangerous this guy is. He took out my main Pokemon almost effortlessly. Focus Punch is going to be one of our only ways of dealing real damage to Slacking. So we're going to focus on his other Pokemon and let Sudowoodo deal with Slacking. Since Slacking has Truant, that means Sudowoodo can protect on one turn and fire Focus Punch on the second turn, and as long as the other Pokemon doesn't hit it, it can get it off. We only need like two or three Focus Punches to bring Slacking down. We have Plus will use Thunder on Scizor, and it cannot miss. Sudowoodo uses Protect to block whatever is incoming. Plus will uses Thunder and does not miss, crushing Scizor. So that's a bunch of Evans' Pokemon gone already. And now he's going to send out his Machamp, which is an incredibly dangerous Pokemon that needs to be dealt with as soon as possible. Slacking uses Crush Claw, which obliterates Blussel in one hit. So next we send out Noctowl, because I am terrified of Earthquake. He uses X Attacks, and we have Noctowl use Hypnosis on Machamp to stop it from attacking. Thankfully, Hypnosis lands, so Machamp is now officially out of the fight until it wakes up again. We have Sudowoodo Hammer Slacking with another Focus Punch. It takes one more, it's going down. We have Sudowoodo Protect yet again because I am terrified of Slacking, as mentioned before. Slacking uses Earthquake, which doesn't hit any of my Pokemon, but does a ton of damage to Machamp. It nearly knocks Machamp out, actually. And so we use this opportunity to set up Reflect with Noctowl so our defenses can be higher, and we can tank any physical moves he throws at us. But Machamp is still asleep. We prepare a Focus Punch on Slacking and fly so we can hit Machamp in the next turn. Machamp is still asleep. I'd be screaming if this were my luck right now. Focus Punch hammers Slacking, and Slacking's gone. Arguably the biggest threat on Evis' team, and it is gone. Next up, he sends out Slowking, which is very durable and quite dangerous. We're going to have Sudowoodo get knocked out on purpose because Sudowoodo is no longer useful for the purposes of this fight. We use Fly, and it nails Machamp. Evis sends out his ultimate shadow Pokemon, the strongest one of them all, Tyranitar! And normally people take issue with this, but I'm fine with it because it can use Sandstorm. Tyranitar whips up a Sandstorm, so it's a perfect counterpart to Groudon and Kyogre. We use Flail on Slowking and it doesn't do anything, as I'd predict. Slowking uses Water Pulse and it almost knocks out Sudowoodo, but it just barely holds on. The Sandstorm means everything that isn't Sudowoodo and Piloswine is going to start taking damage. We throw the Master Ball at Tyranitar to make our life a lot easier. I saved the Master Ball for Tyranitar to make this fight easier. We use Flail on Slowking, which does a pretty decent chunk of damage, actually. Slowking uses Water Pulse, and now Pseudo is going down. And this is why I wanted Tropius. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about in just a sec. There's a reason I wanted Tropius for this. So we use Hypnosis with Noctowl so we can safely set up Sunny Day with Tropius. Hypnosis lands, sending Slowking to Dreamland. And now we have Sunny Day up, which means not only does the Sandstorm no longer hurt us, but Tropius is now faster than everything on his team because all that's left is Slowking, which is very slow. So all we have to do now is just spam Solar Beam and we win. He uses a full restore to try and save Slowking, but it's too late. We're already faster. We use Solar Beam on Slowking and we take about a third of its health. One more Solar Beam and a hit from Fly should send Slowking packing. We land another Solar Beam, but Slowking is still up. Slowking hits us with a Psychic, and it does a pretty decent chunk of damage, but not enough to save it. We hit Slowking with one final Solar Beam, and we've done it. We have beaten the final boss of Pokemon Coliseum using a Never Use team. We did it! Bye, Slowking! No! Even my ultimate Pokemon! After being soundly defeated, the mayor of Phoenix City, who turns out to actually be the leader of Cypher, attempts to escape, only to have his helicopter blown to smithereens through the magic of Aspole, because a holo just appears out of nowhere and blows his helicopter up! And now he's under arrest and the ore region is saved. You did it! Man, what a great game this is. It's funny, compared to the standards of the main series, this is not even all that great a game really, but the unique concept and hook that is, a region full of criminals and Pokemon you have to steal from other trainers really puts it above a lot of the other games in the series. It's short and it doesn't really have that much to do once you get right down to it, but what is there is genuinely creative and I wish more of the Pokemon games were like this. Thank you for watching. <laughs> what, did you really think we were done? <laughs> We still gotta catch and purify the rest of the Pokemon, come on! Since this video is already over an hour, I'm just gonna double time it from here. 
So after you beat the game, you get told through the grapevine that Team Snagum has another working snag machine. You go to their base and try to steal it or destroy it, and it turns out they don't actually have it. It was just a trap to get Gonzap to fight you again. You also snag the few remaining shadow Pokemon from your co-workers. These are Smeargle and Ursaring. Smeargle's not really worth using even though it is never used. Smeargle's only really useful if you can use breeding and whatnot, and you can't in this game, so pass. And you can also catch the other two starter Pokemon you missed, which in my case are Kulava and Bailey. So after that, you find a disc that takes you to the secret Coliseum known as the Deep Coliseum, where you have to rematch all of the Cypher admins again, which means Mirabi, Dakum, Venus, and Ayn. And once you beat them, you find the champion of Deep Coliseum, Agnol. Agnol is your resident fishnet wearing fashion victim, who also happens to be the final boss of Deep Coliseum. And as such, it shouldn't come as a surprise that he's one of the most difficult opponents in the game. There's not really any strategy here other than just hammering you with really powerful attacks and taking advantage of the fact that most of his Pokemon don't have many weaknesses, especially that Kingdra. That thing's a nightmare. But all you really need to do is just hit his team really hard. His Kingdra is the main threat here. The rest of his Pokemon kind of pale in comparison. If you can take out Skarmory with a- Damn it! Damn it! Oh, come on! Damn it! Four misses in a row! Ugh. Okay. That lost us the fight. Skarmory's dangerous enough that if you don't take it out quickly, you lose. So we rematch again, and it goes a whole lot better. We get rid of his Kingdra, and now comes his Shadow Pokemon. Surprise! If you were paying attention earlier, you would realize that I was going to replace Noctowl at some point. Well, I bet you weren't expecting it this late into the game. That's right, Shuckle is Noctowl's permanent replacement. And most people would probably just dismiss any post-game Shadow Pokemon out of hand, but not me. Shuckle has a really important niche my team has been missing. It's a really good special wall. You see those huge defense stats and you see that low HP and you think, there's no way Shuckle can weather hits, but the thing is, it can weather special attacks better than anything else on my team. And it's also great for stall tactics, like using Toxic and Protect, which is a mean strategy. We're gonna keep Shuckle around for a very important reason I'll tell you about later, but for now, let's just say Shuckle is my primary answer to Ghost and Psychic types. I didn't really have an answer to them before this, but they're a lot more common now and I need something that can answer to them. Plus, I'm pretty much done catching Pokemon, so Hypnosis is no longer needed. Be wary when using Shuckle though, because if you get hit with a set damage attack, it'll do a whole lot to Shuckle. So we defeat Agnol and then we hear the word around the town. Apparently, we've been going around hurting people with the Shadow Togetic, which is impossible because you've been controlling West the entire time. So we go back to where everything began at the outskirts stand, and it's another us. It's another you. What? Huh? That's right. The final boss of the game is you. It's you, all right. <laughs> You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? Yeah! It's a Cypher Peon pretending to be you using a bunch of really dangerous Pokemon. Each one of his Pokemon besides his Shadow Pokemon is the Ace Pokemon of previous Cypher admins and Gonzap. And his final Shadow Pokemon is a level 20 Togetic. <laughs> Just really weird. I don't know. I feel like this concept, a lot more could have been done with it. What if, like, five of his Pokemon were the same as five of yours? But, uh, it's a little disappointing because I'd argue he's actually easier to beat than Agnol is. And, like, ugh. I guess it would stretch credulity if this guy had a Suicune, Entei, and Raikou, and a bunch of other insanely hard-to-find Pokemon, but it would have been cooler. Either way, he's not really all that challenging, as stated before. If you know what you're doing, he's pretty easy to defeat. So now we've got all the Shadow Pokemon, but we still have to purify all of them. So you know what that means. We gotta go up Mount Battle and do the 100 Battle Challenge over and over until we can purify all the Shadow Pokemon. Oh boy! But before we do that, we go back to Phenox City and fight all the battles in the pre-gym, which I somehow totally forgot about. And then we go back to the Under and actually enter the Under Coliseum, which I forgot existed because it doesn't have any TMs that I need and I'm really not strapped for cash or anything. So we just do that and we beat that. We purify Shuckle. And then we climb up Mount Battle with the rest of the Pokemon that we need to purify, which is like 50 of them, so I'm not gonna show that. 
and we make it to the top of Mount Battle, and we find Samek, who's the leader of- Wait, his name is Samek? His name is what? Samek? <laughs> Excuse me one second. Big muscly white guy. Samek the Mount Battle Master. He's the leader of Mount Battle guy. Samek the Mount Battle Master. Samek, he's a burly dude. Samek over Mount Battle he rules. Samek, he's the Mount Battle Master guy. So after going through Mount Battle an untold number of times, we have all the Pokemon purified and all of our Pokemon are at the same level, around level 80 or so. So now we're ready for the real final challenge and the part I've been dreading more than anything. It's not the catching, it's not the purifying, it's defeating the actual mount battle <laughs> in battle mode. Oh boy! Because in order to get all the Pokemon, you have to legitimately beat the 100 battle challenge in Mount Battle. And this has been the part of the challenge I've been dreading more than anything. So after amassing a crap ton of Poke Coupons by going up and down Mount Battle over and over and over and over again, we're finally ready to take on the real Mount Battle challenge. I've outfitted each of my Pokemon with the most optimal movesets using everything available to me and the best items for each Pokemon that I've determined. So I'll go through those really quickly. In the lead is Octillery with a Quick Claw, Bubble Beam, Fire Blast, Psychic, and Ice Beam. Behind Octillery is Piloswine holding Never Melt Ice with Earthquake, Blizzard, Protect, and Light Screen, using Never Melt Ice to boost Blizzard's power. Up next is Shuckle with Leftovers, Toxic Encore, Rest, and Protect. It's a staller, and it's gonna be great. Up next is Pseudo Wooda with Choice Band, Double Edge, Protect, Focus Punch, and Rock Slide, so it hits hard. Up next is Plessle with Thunder, Thunder Wave, Light Screen, Rain Dance, and holding a Lumberry so it doesn't get slowed down because we need Plessle speed. Lastly, there's Tropius with Solar Beam, Synthesis, Sunny Day, Fly, and holding a Pattaya Berry so it can boost its special attack even further. All right, are we clear? Let's go! Let's Storm Mount Battle and win this thing! And now we're on the final stretch of Mount Battle, the last 10 fights. I gotta be brutally honest, I didn't think this was all that challenging up to now. Honestly, if you use your team members effectively and you have a competently structured team, you'll be just fine. I was led to believe this was actually a really difficult challenge, but so far it's not. But once you get to like the last 20 battles, the game takes the kid gloves off and starts taking you seriously. So you need to know what you're doing. Octillery was my win condition for like the first 50 battles or so. But then I had to start switching it up when people started having hard counters to Octillery. 
So I'm using my entire team to their absolute fullest. Even Shuckle got in on the action by using Toxic on Psychic types and then protecting until they drop dead. So it's really quite something. Every single Pokemon here has a role that it fulfills. Not a one of them is dead weight. They all do something. It's actually quite a sight to behold. They're very good. My team is doing exceptionally well, all things considered. But I'm not using top tier Pokemon and it really shows. I've lost more than a few of these battles. Every battle you beat without losing a Pokemon, you get a continue. So I have like 70 or 80 continues because I've lost almost none of them. I've gotten perfect victories on almost all of them. The challenge starts off really slow. It was a very slow burn. It's not even really till around fight 60 or 70 that the enemies even really put up a fight. But now that we're at the last 10 battles, it's, uh, I will say it's definitely harder than the main game. And now we're coming to the true final boss, the leader of Mount Battle, Infin. And here you stand at the top of Mount Battle, looking for all the world like it's Mordor! Infin welcomes you, and the final battle begins. that fucking Kyogre. Infant is the true final boss of Mount Battle and one of the most difficult fights in the entire game. Honestly, one of the most difficult fights in the entire series. And it's not because of his other Pokemon, which are dangerous in their own right, it's because of that Kyogre. Nothing I have walls that thing. No matter what I do, it's going to flatten me. Pretty much the only way I'm going to win this is by using Shuckle and using Luck to defeat it. Kyogre can either one-shot everything on my team, or can use Calm Mind and then one-shot everything on my team. But I can actually work around this to some extent. Infin always uses Kyogre last, so you can work around that. So what you're going to want to hope he does is that he sends out anything except Gardevoir, really. Gardevoir is the only other Pokemon I'd need Shuckle to counter. So ideally, you want him to send out Altaria, Crobat, Magneton, or Agron, defeat those two, and then use what's left over to defeat Kyogre. I have to let him knock out my first Pokemon, then I have to switch Shuckle in, then I have to predict whether it's going to use Hydro Pump or Ice Beam or Calm Mind. If it uses Hydro Pump or Ice Beam, I have to use Toxic and Protect and hope that I can stall long enough for it to be dead. If it uses Calm Mind, I have to predict correctly and use Encore to trap it in Calm Mind, then switch over to Tropius, use Sunny Day, and spam Solar Beam over and over and over and hope that Kyogre does not break out of Encore so that Solar Beam can take it out. And, oh, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like my chances here. Kyogre is legitimately the most powerful Pokemon in Gen 3 by a broad margin, so I'm fighting a serious losing battle. It's almost as powerful as Mewtwo was in Gen 1, to put it in perspective. After a ton of tries, I finally managed to whittle him down to Justice Kyogre. And I use Encore, and it turns out he was going to use Calm Mind. So I trap him in it, I switch over to Tropius and use Sunny Day, hammer with as many Solar Beams as I can. He breaks out of Encore, hits me with Ice Beam, Tropius goes down. Oh no, Shuckle's in a corner. I'm just gonna lose this one. But somehow, by some dumb stroke of luck, Hydro Pump misses right then and there. And to make that even greater, on top of that stroke of luck, I get another one. Toxic lands, takes Kyogre out, and I've won! I don't know how that happened, but I somehow managed to defeat a Kyogre using only bottom of the barrel Pokemon. I can hardly believe my luck. And I've proven it! I've conclusively proven it! You can beat this game using nothing but never use Pokemon! And now it's time to collect our just desserts, our long deserved reward, the Pokemon you get for beating the Mount Battle Challenge and purifying all the Pokemon. ho -Oh. ho What I really like is that it's implied to be the same ho -Oh that stops Evis' helicopter at the end of Colosseum. So that's really cool. I guess it saw us as worthy or whatever. Anyways, it's been a long video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll do a challenge like this again someday. But for now, this is where it ends.
Hey there, Sudsy again. Like always, this video took a considerable amount of my time, so I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I really appreciate it if you've actually stuck through this all the way to the end, because this took me quite a while. If you want to see more content like this, consider liking, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you really enjoy my work, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Here's a neat little thing about this game you might not know. If you go back to Pyrite Cave after beating Dakim, you'll find that there's actually someone standing where Mirror B used to be. His name is Miracle B and he wants to have an afro like Mirror B. He's a, a palette swap cypher peon, but what has to be heard is his music. It has to be heard to be believed. Oh God, they, they, they really, um, bad mitified it. it it's it's great oh my god lady venus is the unders no she's my idol for lady venus i could do anything but even though I'm so near to her, I've not seen even a glimpse of her in person. Oh, it hurts deeply. Lady Venus! What a freak.